Hello, my babies. How's everybody doing? It's good to see you again. Oh, let me tell you. It is so nice outside. It scared me. Well, you know, the weather's been letting us know what we're going to get this winter. And it's going to be cold. I got a cat. She got a damn coat on her that's so fucking sick, sick, thick, thick, thick. I looked and then one week she didn't have nothing on and the next week she had all this hair and stuff pulling on down. I said, oh Lord, I know it's going to be a cold, it's going to be a cold winter. So I'm telling y'all right now, block up them windows, whatever you got to do to insulate that house. Your house, whose house, your apartment or whatever, do what you got to do because it's going to be cold. And that Ebola, be careful out there. That's no joke. It's coming from every ends and everywhere. And it's going to make a lot of people cry. And you don't know which way to go, up or down or sideways or whatever. So be awful careful. Wash your hands. If you got to wash your hands 50 times, then wash them 50 times. Careful touching your face or whatever it is that you got to do, but just be careful. Because this is not a joke. I don't think they're lying about all that, though. It's not a joke. You said a can, Did you get it? I said, didn't you well? Thank you. All right. So let's go with this first question. Let's say, first I want to say that I love you because you remind me of my grandma. I hope you and your family be blessed, but I just had a close cousin die back in May, and I was having a difficult time dealing with that. Then I turned 30 on September 11th. Then September 29th, my mom died. Mm. I was very close to her. She was just not my mom, but my best friend. Mm. You and Kevin remind me of me and my mom because I, too, am a gay black male. My mom loved and accepted me when I came out at 18, also in church. But I still have a hard time dealing with my mom's death. And I feel very lost and hurt talking to people. I feel very lost and hurt talking to people helps a little bit. But when I'm alone, I go right back to being depressed and crying. I still have my grandma and I have a sister, so I try to put on a brave front for them and for others. I have thought about committing suicide a couple times. The only reason I haven't is because I know God and my mom will be disappointed in me. And I know my grandma and sister need me, but I pray. And I've stayed in church, but I still feel so hurt and angry, not at God, but at the world. Anyway, is it normal to feel like this? And will this feeling go away eventually, or will I always feel like this? Oh, baby, come on. Yes, it's going to go away. Anything that's worth hurting, it will hurt you and hurt you and hurt you for a while, and each hurt will ease the pain. Now you say to yourself, do she know what she's talking about? Yes, I do. It'll ease up, and you won't even know it. The more you talk about it, the more you, you talk about the things she did, the places she went, the things you did with each other. That's why God gave us a memory. Come on. I mean, what would we be like without a memory? You know, you couldn't remember me and I couldn't remember you. Or anybody else or the things we did, the places we went. Or the places you go. The laughter, the smiles, the tears. Come on now. She wouldn't want you to do nothing uh, that'll hurt yourself. We have children so that they can be a better version of us. Not a worse version, a better version. And I know that she gave you the courage to go on without her. If not, then what was it all for? Was it a joke? Or is this parenthood thing... Um, just something um, to be laughed at. I mean, we all can't make it by ourselves. But you know what? You sound like you had a good mom. And you remember that good mom and laugh at it. Go places with it. 
You don't hide that memory. Only thing you hide is that you, you can't see it. She's, with this, she's right there with you. You just can't see her. She can see you. And she still loves you as if she was sitting right there in your lap. Or her hands around your neck. Telling you and whispering in your ear how much she loved you. Don't ever think about throwing your life away because life is so valuable. And nowadays, life seems to be slipping away from everybody. People got all kinds of diseases and, and, and these things out here that's to take you away in a, in, a, in a matter of a few days. You think you're healthy, you get a call for a germ, bam, you're gone. So, baby, don't play with life. So, um, thank God for it each and every day, because there's millions of people that don't wake up every morning. Believe me, if you're one of the lucky ones who wake up, that's another chance for you to say, forgive me, I'm sorry, how can I help you, or what can I do for you, for somebody else. Well, see, life is not about you, son. She left you here so that you could carry on. Her legacy. So do it right for her. I mean, Mama did a good thing, didn't she? I think she did. You let me know. All right, this one long. Oh, this is too long, but I'm going I'm to get through it, some of it. It says, I would just like your opinion on this subject. So here it is. I'm a 30-foot, I'm a 35-year-old woman who is not new to relationships and breakups. However, this is the first time that I want to break up and still be cool with the person that I'm talking to. I began dating this man named Tony a little over two years ago. We eventually moved in together. It didn't work out. We got our own separate places, stayed together, but eventually he cheated. We broke up because, of course, we were off and on a few, for a few months until he started trying to claim me. I wasn't feeling it because in addition to cheating, he passed on a curable STD so that trust is just not there and as a matter of fact we haven't had sex together since all this time he has been trying to win me back and beyond the sex I really like him as a person and enjoy his company I just won't trust him again so in that mindset I started I started dating someone else Mike he is sweet he's a sweet man and into a lot of the same things I'm into. We started talking and although I told him about my last relationship, I did not tell him that me and this other man was still kind of sort of dating. Now two months, two months in, this man wants to get serious. I started pulling back because honestly, we just share our love of culture. I'm not particularly physically attracted to him and I see how down the road we would just not work out. However, he is a good man who has dealt with some things. So I wanted to be honest, break it off, but still be friends. Truth about both men, financially they can't offer me anything. Which is to say neither is working steady. They both deal with insecurities that the old me would want to take care of. But as I wrote, I'm 35. I just ain't got time. However, we both have ties between us. Oh, girl! With Tony, I am close to his family and his, he's close to mine, which would be tough to let those kiddos go, especially since we both have become attached to one another. The second guy's in the same city that I live in and actually got a brief, I got him a, pre, a brief part-time job working at my center. So I say all that to say, I just don't see a future with either one of these gentlemen, even though they are what I would say nice men. My question is... So that wasn't the question. Okay, like you done answered your own question in this fucking, <laughs> you know what? So she said, <laughs> so my question to you is how can I just break it off without being seen as a total bitch so we can eventually move forward as friends? I only ask this because in the past I've been called cold and calculated and a well at being a bitch for doing so. I just want to know if there's a better option rather than just saying I'm just not that into you. I'm just saying, that's all. Let's be truthful. You can hold them chips in there. That's it? Why are you going to tell lies? Just be truthful. 
And if he wants to accept you on those terms, go mm. ahead on. Yeah. But otherwise, you move your way, and he move his. And you almost answered your own question anyhow. You <laughs> ain't need me. <laughs> so this one says, I'm 19 years old in college, and my ex-boyfriend is 24 with a decent job. I decided to have an abortion during our ninth-month-old relationship because I wasn't emotionally or financially ready to take care of a child. He wanted to keep it and was devastated when I went through my with my decision. He already has a seven-year-old son from a previous relationship. He's a great father and an amazing man. I love him with all my heart, but ever since I had the abortion, nothing was the same. We would argue over small issues, and it was clear that it was stemming from the core situation. He started resenting me, becoming very distant, and started showing signs of cheating. I started cheating on him because of that. I, I started cheating on him because of that, and we would call each other out. Both denied it, but I truly knew what was going on. We decided it was best to just let it go and to stop contacting each other. It's been two months, <clears throat> and we recently got back in touch. He took me out on a couple dates and says he still genuinely loves and cares for me, but isn't sure he can fully get over everything that happened. We started having sex again and saying I love you without addressing all of our past mistakes. I'm worried that we took it a little too fast and that we'll end up in the same predicament. My question is, should I let it go and move on because we have a whole lot of making up to do or start from scratch and try to make it work? You don't have no make up to do. You don't already made up your mind from the first trip. When that first, when you had to have pregnant with that first baby, you made up your mind that it wasn't going to be no baby for them. So why are you going to go through the same thing now? Oh, it might happen. Only way it might happen if you don't use nothing. You don't use no pill, or you don't use no condom. I mean, otherwise you setting your own self up. A woman don't have a baby unless she really wants to have one or she really makes a mistake. Ask me, I can tell you, I did it every four years, it seems as though. And then one I did every 10, 10 years. And I don't even know how in the hell I did that one. But it happened. And everybody got here. And I didn't throw nobody away. I didn't make them pay for my mistakes. So if you think you're going to make another baby pay for your mistakes, I advise you to leave it alone. That's all I got to say. Okay, this one says... So I have a dilemma. My best friend slept with one of my exes and tried to hide it from me. When I found out, I was furious, but decided that I could try to work through it because we have a really tight friend circle, and I don't want any tension in it. A few months later, I realized that the friendship still isn't the same, but I'm not sure about how to handle the relationship with my best friend. Do I cut her off or try to work through it? What are you trying to <laughs> Everybody's answering their own questions. <laughs> what is this today? <laughs> Next. Well, I could give us some advice. If you people sleep, a lot of people sleep with the same people, and you never know. Just because she ain't tell you doesn't mean that she's hiding it from you. Maybe it's just not your business to know, or she probably thought that you I don't want care about the situation. That you would. But people, it happens. It happens. Yes, it does happen. But it happens sometimes when you really don't know who is who. When you know who this person is, you gonna climb in the bed. You're nasty. But you I'm talking nasty. about. I'm talking about. It could have happened before, and she just never told her. Oh please. It could have happened before. Yeah. Okay. It could have. But she already knows how mm -hmm. she feel about the situation. Yes, yeah, she sure does. all the time, more than she would like to know. Mm -hmm. It says, "My name is Art, and let him uh, down for oh, it. this is not a letter. This is not a, a question. Okay, 
Um, I'm writing because I need, I'm in need of your advice. I, I guess my husband and I are in our early to mid forties, mm. and I believe he is experiencing <laughs> what you call that ED. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He assures me it's nothing about me, and that his issues are his. But this has been an ongoing problem for three years, and as and as such has become my problem as I love my husband and I'm not faithful but I am very frustrated sexually and otherwise I believe he is embarrassed to seek treatment or even discuss it outside of our relationship and this has made me feel shameful and secretive about it too it's become our dirty little secret that is slowly smothering our sex life to death any advice will be appreciated well baby girl I could tell you I know a little bit about that. And most men suffer from it. Mm -hmm. They suffer from it at one time or another. They're going to suffer from it. It's not just your man. It ain't whether he like you, love you, hate you, or none of that. It ain't got nothing to do with it. If it just ain't rising, it just ain't rising. It could be from the medication that he's taking. Could be from a lot of things, but they do have things out here that will help you. They have all kinds of sex toys, stores you can go to. Get him to talk to him about it. You know, if you can't do it yourself, oh, my, my, my grandfather always said, if you, can, you can't cut the mustard, lick the jar. That's what my grandfather always said. <laughs> can't cut that mustard, lick that jar. All kinds of ways of pleasing each other. If that's what you really want to do. That's what husbands and wives are supposed to be able to do. To know each other so intimately. That way that you can please each other. That way. But um, look. It happens. It's not you baby. It ain't what you look like. Who you are. Not unless you got somebody hidden under the covers somewhere. And this has been going on three years now. It started and already started. But they got, like I said, they got stuff out there that you can use. All them Viagra pills and all it's different kinds of stuff. It's not just, um, what is it, Viagra and um, what's the name of the other one? Um, Cialis. They got all yeah, kinds Cialis. of Yeah, Cialis. They got uh, quite a few different kinds. You can ask your doctors, the, your doctors. Uh, give your name or, or uh, give you a name of a couple of them that you could try. But if you don't try, you'll never know. And um, it, it's, it's the saddest thing about it is he could play all the damn games he want to play, but he won't be able to please no damn body but himself. Mm. You know, and that's that get kind of sad if you don't try to do something about it. You know, uh, you see some of these old men that used to wait for check time. Girls go lick them up at check time and, and walk away with that money in their pocket and go ahead on about their business. Yeah, I got to go miss service, Mr. So-and-so. It could be more than that. Sex business is the biggest business out here that ever, in ever creation. It's the biggest building. It, it, you can do anything with it. And don't let it knock you down. Don't let it tear up your marriage. Is he the, still the sweetest person you ever met? He gives you hugs and kisses. Or try to be with you sometime. You know, try to uh, be more a little intimate with each other. And when it comes to that, be, don't be scared to talk about it. A dick is a dick. Excuse the expression. A pussy is a pussy. They both are ugly. You know, and you just do what you got to do for them. Some require more attention than others. The older you get, the more you try, the more you take care of it, the longer it'll service you. Some, some men out here, they, they, pussy don't owe them nothing. They done got out there and got all they can get. And don't care if they don't never get another shot. Because they done 
had his man. You, you heard the thing. I know you've seen it on the news where the guy had the uh, uh, 17 women, 34 kids, 35 kids. My God. I mean, hey, he wasn't shooting no blanks. But you got to, you know, it happens. Work at it. You can do it. If you want to be scared of it, you're going to wind out there with somebody else sneaking and creeping. And who wants to be a creeper? You got to be watching him. Is he watching me? Is he on my cell? Oh, you don't want to have to go through that crap. If you love him, love him. Speak on it. He ain't got nothing on your on his body that you ain't seen. And you either. You know? Whether he went and got a younger person or an older person, it wouldn't make no difference. It still ain't gonna rise. Unless he try to do something about it. Let's just get one of them old-fashioned pumps and get the pump put in there and you just pump it on the side. Pump, 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 pump. Well, I, they got that too. I mean, what you ask me? They got so much stuff out here, girl. Who? Look into it. Glancement says, um, I really need your help. I'm from London and in my last year of college, this is the school in we had before we go to university. I am finding this year so hard to motivate myself and do my work. I find myself procrastinating and just not bothered to do anything. I know I need to get it together because if I don't pass this year, I won't get into university. I just don't know how. Help. Any advice is greatly appreciated. Give yourself a little vacation. Your body's trying to tell you something. Some people have that mind that can snap back into anything. Go out there and refresh yourself. You need a little vacation. You need to set it up for yourself. Take a little time. A week, even if it's two weeks. And um, make it so you go do something that you want to do. Play ball, go swimming, uh, go, uh, <coughs> ride the waves. Do whatever it is that it is that you like to do for a while. Do that. And get just get all that out of your system. Whatever it is that's bothering you that's in your system, get it out of your system. Then once you calm down and have gotten some of that out of your system, you'll be willing to go back to sitting down and willing to wanting to learn again. And do what it is that you've been preparing to do all your life. You know, because you don't want to actually give it up. You don't want to throw it all away. You know, on a whim. But it's just, we get like that every now and then. I know I do. Sometimes, you know, some days I, um, since I've gotten older, and uh, I ain't ashamed to say how old I am. I'm getting ready to turn 68. About to turn 69. 68. Mm. <laughs> Getting, uh, I ain't seen now. You was born 45. It's 2014. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you was born in 1945. This year you turned 69 because next year you turned 70. Well, my son just told me I skipped a year. <laughs> you must used to be telling people you're 67 or something. Hmm. Well, any hoot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let it bother you. Go ahead and do what it is that you gotta do. Everybody's been sitting up here this week. They answer their own question. They don't need. If you think about what it is that you want to do and um, how you want to do it, sometimes you can answer your own question. It just seems better when somebody else tells it to you. Uh, or 
or it sounds, makes more sense when somebody else says it to you. And um, like I said, when you realize the relationship is over, just go on and say what you got to say and go ahead. I hate a sneak. I hate somebody to stand up there and lie to me about this and lie to me about that. You know it ain't no good because it's, it's better to be truthful. It's not always sometimes the best situation or the things they do all the time to be truthful, but hey, you can't get around it really being truthful. Because um, I hate running around and you run around living a lie. God, that's hard. Sometimes you've got to remember one lie over the other lie that you told. And not that lie, you got to remember that lie. You know, so so not to um, get into that kind of quest, kind of quest and remember the things that you said or the things that you did that uh, you got to be careful about what it is that you do and say. So, when you find out that things aren't going the way you and your friend want it to be or it did two years ago or three, four years ago, then it's time to turn it loose. Um, you don't have to make no show of it or carry on, I hate you and all that. You don't have to go through all that. It's just, it's just one of those things that happen. I keep telling you, let go when time comes and let go. You'll feel happier and your partner will feel much happier. So at least he or she was honest about it. They ain't stay up there and tell me no whole lot of lies because I know they cared about me. And a person knows how you care about them when you don't stay up there and tell them a whole lot of lies and this and that. And things that went on and things that happened. So, try to get in church sometime or whatever church it is, it doesn't matter. Pray a little bit and ask God to be with you and show you in the right, push you in the right direction. Because you know what, a lot of times when I get all, all bumbled up and jumbled up, I just go right on in the church and sit down in there and let that silence and God's glory and goodness and love fall down on me because it's always essence of it in there. And a lot of times, he can straighten it out for you. You know, he can show you, in the, put, show you the right direction for you to go to. Well, you know, even push you my way a little bit and say, well, you know, go ask mama about it. And, and see what happens. You know, and I love you all, and I, I want you to be happy in life, and I want you to be careful out here because you got a lot of diseases and stuff out here. Things we can't answer for, things we can't control. Uh, you be careful the way you clean things. You might have to use a more disinfected, or you might have to use a little bit more Clorox or whatever else that you use for. Um, uh, disinfectants and stuff like that. Just be more careful um, around people and a lot of times who you invite in. You know, and uh, I'll be looking forward to um, seeing you next week. And I just want you to be careful and let you know that you're loved. You're loved regardless. You know, You go to sleep.